Okay, Kathy, we are live on YouTube and ready to go. Perfect. Can we put up our um, notice for phone calls, et cetera, et cetera? Yes, thank you. Here they come. Oops. Perfect. <clears throat> All right, everyone. Um, I, um, this is Kathy Olson, Chair of the Public Art Committee. Um, we are calling our meeting to order. Um, and again, um, welcome everyone who is joining us on Zoom. And I would also like to say that um, if you would like to join by cell phone, you can call in one, two, five, three, 215-8782-213-338-8477 or 267-831-0333. And if um, you're using a landline, you may call in 888-475-4499. And you could also call in by 877-853-5257. Our webinar ID is 869-2489-9859. And our, the password that you will want to use is 574-069. Um, we will try and recognize anyone who is um, out there. So if you press star nine, you can raise your hand to be recognized. And if you could also use star six to mute and if you are not on computer. So that being said, I will open the meeting for public comment, if any. And it, I'm not seeing any, in, none in our chat. So- um, I'm not able to see anybody's images except for you, Kathy. Oh, could we have everyone turn on their, um, their video? I saw Tiana for a second and then she's disappeared here. <laughs> yeah. So if Jim and Greg and Tiana, they're oh, I, there, I see her. Okay. Now. Greg probably is still on the phone. Thank you, James. Now. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna have to video me? off and That's mute it. The, um, on a work site temporarily. But I'll be listening in and can respond if anybody needs anything. Okay. Um, and and um, James, if you could talk really loud, that'd be great because you're kind of muted if you have a comment. <laughs> um, so um, first of all, um, I owe everyone an apology. We could not, we still have not located our June planning meeting minutes. Um, Brianne, who um, we will give a chance to talk here at the end of the meeting, um, has been looking and looking. Um, unfortunately, Paisley is out of town and Brianne, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong on this until the end of August. So we are stuck um, without our planning meeting minutes. Um, and I apologize that we, we have not been able to find those. The other major apology is, is our last meeting, of course, we had no one to take minutes. So I have been working on putting together a synopsis of that and did not finish, but I would like, or even I send them to Brianne, I want to send them to all of you so you could help me fill in the blanks. Um, it is um, apparently my fingers could not do the walking while my mouth was doing the talking. So, um, but we will have minutes for the July meeting. Um, so um, 
we will approve, hopefully we will have our planning meeting minutes and our July meeting minutes and our August minutes to be approved next month in September. Um, budget. So that's our agenda item number four. Um, actually, I'm pretty excited about this. Brianna and I were able to meet with the finance office and everyone hold your chairs. It appears, um, although we, we have the total sum of money that we have in our budget, we do not have the different coded areas broken out yet, but it looks like that we have, <laughs> hold on your hats, $22,769 in our budget. Um, part of that monies is administration, part can be used for projects, and part is, of course, allocated to maintenance of our artworks. Um, just a quick recap, we have our one and a half percent for art. Of that one and a half percent that we receive from public construction, and I know I'm being redundant for some of you, but this kind of gets to that budget issue. Um, of that one and a half percent, half a percent gets put into a maintenance budget because prior to the increase, we had no money for maintenance. We were begging for all of our maintenance and um, had had it donated. And you know now we do have um, monies there. Not huge amount of monies, but we have monies. Um, the one percent is actually by ordinance. We can spend up to twenty percent for administration and i.e. Um, celebrations for completion of the art and um, if we had to pay for advertising, those types of things. Um, and the remaining 80% is actually for the project. Now, that being said, with modern technology and, and even without modern technology, we have rarely, except I think maybe once or twice in my memory for very small projects, ever allocated that 20% for administration. We truly, um, what the committees in the past have done is always try to allocate as much to the artist for the actual projects. So um, to that end, you know, 20, almost $23,000, um, Brianne and I, and if anyone would like to join and be on a budget committee, that would be great. We are um, going to meet with the finance office again before our next meeting. And I had given them um, a breakdown of how it, we would like to see our monies um, shown to us, meaning project by project. So we know how much money was um, there, what our income was, what our expenses were, and what the bottom line was for that project, project by project. So we don't have to dig through all of these different codes and understand this, that, and every other thing. Um, they were very much in agreement for that. They saw what we had done and they're going to be actually putting together something like that. So we'll get a better breakdown. Um, just, you know, just a quick look, see of what we have in the budget. Um, so I, I'd like to thank Brianne for, you know, is she, I mean, I will tell you, and, she, and we can, again, <laughs> um, I want her to reintroduce herself at the end of the meeting, but she has jumped in with both feet and has been great in all of this. So I want to extend thanks to her for her help in all of that. Um, anybody, does anybody have any questions about the budget or any comments? Um, it's nice to see that we have that kind of money. And, and again, based on what we were thinking as far as projects, um, you know, I, I think now with some of our brainstorming, um, we sh should be thinking about maybe ways that we could maybe instigate or start some projects on our own. Um, the next project, traffic signals. Um, I reported last month that we, had actually completed two of the boxes um, that were removed from the Reserve Street corridor. Um, I've, we've been working with the Grant Creek Neighborhood Council um, in grants as well as private donations. And those two were paid out of some of the neighborhood funds plus some of the private donations that we acquired, which was excellent. We also, um, I 
mentioned that I had worked on a grant proposal with them. So we did receive $4,500 for that. One of those is going to be the Lillian Nelson replacement by Costco. The other two are for um, the, the new, well, actually the one by Western Machinery. Um, it's going to be a new artist because we could not find the, old, the former artist and we've looked all over. And then the neighborhood has decided they actually would like to see some new artwork there, as well as on that westbound entrance. Um, the issue, the issue with all of this is by the time the money came through and getting out the art call, getting it to all of you for committee timing issue, normally we would be doing it this month or next month. Um, we're worried about the timing. So the neighborhood, um, I'll be talking with that council and then bringing it back to you to possibly just have that money held over until next spring. Um, so you'll be hearing more about that. Um, one of the things we can do this fall yet is um, Lily and Nelson is willing to redo her piece by Costco. And that's the one with um, called Now That's a Cowboy and it's the cowboy riding the dinosaur. And that's, she's painted that. Um, she's very excited about repainting it, um, but is, now looking at it, she'd really like to get it done in the next few weeks. So we've been funded for three boxes. So we still maybe get one of them done this year and then have the two new ones for next spring. Um, you know, we you never know about the weather, but Lily and his, um, the neighborhood's excited. That was actually the one they, they was their first choice in getting redone. So they're pretty excited that she's willing to redo it. Um, any, anything to be said about that? Dennis has been helping me with that project also, but the neighborhood has, you know, this is one of those cases where the neighborhood has really been great and have stepped up. They um, were great in working with me on writing the proposal um, and just, they, they were phenomenal. So, um, any comments, questions? Hmm? Uh, so are, you, are you saying that we do have, we have two and that one artist is um, willing to, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I've got to, maybe it's my um, computer. I'm gonna try and turn it up so I can hear you. Could be me. A hard time. <laughs> is, that, is that any better? <laughs> um, anyways, are you saying that there are two boxes that need to be, Done and there's one artist who's committed and we still have to find another one? Nope, there's three boxes total. Okay, okay. Um, one, art, one is, um, will be done by Lillian Nelson, redone, and then we will have an, the art called for two. But because of the timing of the grant and et cetera, et cetera, um, rather than put out an art call this year, their neighborhood is talking about holding their money over for next spring. That sounds great. <laughs> but Lillian is willing, you know, she'd like to redo, you know, it, now she would like to redo hers in the next few weeks, but it, um, she just needs to work with her family members on this now. <clears throat> so, um, and we, again, this is one of those projects too, where we work with one of the traffic control companies who's been donating their candles and their sidewalk clothes signs and all of those types of things. They've been donating the use of those for most of the years we've been doing the project because the city does not have any available um, equipment or those things for us to use. So they are willing to do that again as well. Um, I, I did wanna throw this out though for you and ask you if Lillian, you know, if she does do it, um, what typically we do is after we've done some signal boxes, uh, done the signal boxes, we have a dedication on the first Friday. And the Dana Gallery has always allowed us to take about 15, 20 minutes and do the recognition of the artists then. Um, since we were not able to recognize our artists last year and we did have some boxes redone this year. I was going to throw it out or we were gonna throw it out to see what you all thought of maybe having 
having a dedication in October in recognizing, um, contacting the artists who did the boxes last year and those that have redone this year and just um, recognize them again in October. How do y'all, what do y'all think of that? I see Stoney like shaking her head, yes. <laughs> I just, you know, and it, it really, it's great. The, bar, the artists hold up their boxes, talk about them, say where they are. And, you know, I, I just felt, you know, awful that we had some amazing pieces done last year, but could not um, officially recognize artists at an opening. So um, we don't need, this is not something that's up for a vote. Um, be, because this is traditionally we do it, but I, I think, you know, as a subcommittee, we've always coordinated that. And um, I'm just wondering if you all think it's still appropriate to do that, even though it's a year late. Thumbs up. Cool. Okay, I hate these Zoom meetings. <laughs> I'm so want to meet in person. Um, perfect. Well, um, our next agenda is the Indigenous Mural Project. Um, and Danny is not here. Um, it's my understanding there is no update on that, um, but she can update us next month. And I, you know, it's one of those things that um, isn't moving as maybe as fast as we all would like. And we really don't know where we're going to be fitting in all of that, but it's such an amazing project. So hopefully we'll hear some more about it next week or next month. I'm ap I apologize. Yeah, I was hoping to hear more about that. It just sounds like such an exciting project. And uh, I was really hoping to uh, hear how that is moving along, but I guess. Well, you, you know, and, and it's a huge project. I mean, there are, there are people involved and we all know, um, I mean, it, when you, <laughs> if you kind of are involved in a project, you end up coordinating and spending a lot of time. And, you know, and that's, that's part of all of this is, um, you know, it, it does take time out of everyone's life. But with that one too, and with the downtown association um, and the other entities that are involved, I think um, I'd really like to see that move forward. And I, and I think it'd be great if we could play an important role in that. Since the idea came from this committee. <coughs> so, um, Perfecto. Okay, Dennis, Dash Sculpture, you are on. And once again, everybody hold on to your seats. <laughs> yeah, I got a hold of uh, Mike Lustig. And uh, so he was looking at coming up. Actually, now, well, he, he wanted to come up the, uh, lost track of my dates here the week of the 30th, but he's just getting back from a trip. And so he would like to come uh, in September. Um, I guess the 6th is Labor Day. Is that what that is? So he wants to come on the 7th of September. And uh, so I've been in touch with uh, uh, Nathan, McLeod, who is the uh, landscape architect for uh, Parks and Recs. And uh, so I spoke with him, and so he's going to make himself available uh, when he can. He has some meetings um, on those two days, the 7th and 8th, but uh, he's going to make himself available, and we will go around uh, some of the uh, Riverside Parks to. Uh, uh, see what could be used as a location for this sculpture. The sculptures are very esoteric and using uh, like reflective uh, glass and steel and, and that type of thing. And most of them have been interior types of sculptures. So he's really excited to come up and get inspired here in Missoula with, uh, with an exterior type of piece. And uh, so parks and recs have certain uh, requirements um, that they have for the uh, for, for such a sculpture uh, that it be safe, 
and that type of thing. And uh, so he'll help us with that. And uh, so it'll be kind of, it'll be real exciting to, to meet him. Um, I thought Greg especially would like to meet him because uh, uh, they have real similar uh, types of backgrounds. And uh, so um, all the committee members are uh, invited uh, to uh, be involved with that as well. So that's, that's real exciting. I'm supposed to get in touch with him right after this meeting and then finalize the date for him to come up, which would be the, uh, on the uh, 7th. So, so he'll be here for two days then, 7th and 8th? Come in this like this morning of the seventh and fly out the eighth, or <clears throat> that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I'll find out exactly the times and everything. So that's a Tuesday and a Wednesday. Yeah. Um. So what Dennis and I were thinking is, if he does come, whatever day he comes in is that evening. And I know we talked about this last month, and probably every month that we've been talking about this is maybe having a little gathering. Um because not all the committee members might be able to take the time and walk around town with them. Um, but also just a little get together in the evening. And um, I was going to talk to Peter and um, Lambros and see if we might be able to use that, what I used to call the um, ceramic room at Cafe Dolce um, or um, not, I don't know if this is appropriate with all of you, but we, we have a pretty cool downtown office, Berkshire Hathaway, um, next to Faruqi's, in between Faruqi's and the Montana store. It's just a half a block north of the Broadway Higgins intersection. Um, we could do something there, or if somebody had any other ideas of a place um, where there might be a smaller room where we could meet and greet and just have a little casual get together. Um, what do y'all think? Can you remind me of the the dates again on this? Since I wasn't um, here for our last meeting, it's I'm trying to dig oh. through my calendar right now. So I, no, he Dennis just said he was he's planning. You know, we've been going truly working on this now since last March. He was going to come, but now he's looking at coming September, arriving September seventh, and this leaving. The, yeah, September. Okay. Great. September 7th and leaving on the 8th. But Dennis will confirm all, all of that. Thank you. So, I, I mean, I think if possible, if we can do something outside, like keep it outside, that probably mm -hmm. would be the most hmm. prudent. Um, you know, not that I'm trying to think of bars downtown, but you know, there is Plonk, the upper, we could do, um, do something at Plonk. We could do something um, outside at Cafe Dolce. I think that's a great idea, Stoney. Sorry. I, um, I, not to throw Berkshire in again, but we do have an amazing deck at our South Avenue office, which is truly lovely. And um, we have a kitchen, we have um, so there could be, you know, we can have the doors open so we could be inside outside if it's not possible to get space. Um, I think what would probably do once Dennis has all of the dates and everything set in stone, um, see which facility we could get where we could be outside <clears throat> um, or have an inside outside thing or something. Um, and then just maybe move forward from that um, wherever we could get space. I mean, uh, if, if Berkshire Hathaway has a deck, Kathy, I mean, that sounds good to me. I mean, something with less noise. I mean, most of us have never met in person um, on this call right now. So there would be an added benefit of mm -hmm. bringing um, this committee together because it is, mm -hmm. you, you were sharing that it's difficult to have these continued Zoom meetings. And I think one of the biggest challenges particularly as we bring new people on, just creating mm -hmm. kind of rapport and connection mm -hmm. um, in something other than a two-dimensional plane. So, you know, somewhere where there's less noise, where we don't have to maybe do the dance of, is there enough seating? And, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, I mean, that seems good to me. I it's, have a bit- It's actually quite nice. <laughs> we have a 
I mean, it, it is really lovely. We are our office. The one I'm is I'm thinking of the one what it, um, is over by the fairgrounds, right across the street from the fairgrounds on South Avenue. Um, it's it's lovely, and the deck is nice, and we we host a lot of gatherings up there because it's so nice. So great. It wouldn't cost us anything, and we could we could bring in some munchies and some food. Well, munchies are food, beverages. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, would everybody be okay with that if we did it at Berkshire? Um, also, we were thinking of um, inviting Parks and Rec, um, Donna Gockler, who is the director, and of course, Nathan, who's been part of this, um, and you know some other folks that you all could suggest or invite. <clears throat> so it's, it's very cool. Yeah, I think outdoors could be a great idea. Okay. You know, with everything going on, um, I think that'd be great, you know, weather permitting. But. And I have lots of masks and <laughs> everything else. So um, if I don't, again, I don't think that will be a problem with the city. And Marita, you can help me with that one or help us with that one, but it's not an official meeting. It's a gathering. So what do you think? Is that would that do you think that we should go for it? I think that's okay. a great idea. And um, if we're not going to be using taking minutes or conducting it as a regular meeting, I don't see why we couldn't have it at your office. Okay, cool. We'll plan on that. Um, I, I mean, from what I understand, everybody has their shots. We will have masks and all appropriate protocols if anyone wants to wear it. I will, um, we'll confirm with that, but I'm just gonna say we can do it here because I can. So lovely. Um, I'll, I'll ask just in case, but um, we'll, we'll ask Marty or someone in the city clerk's office. Mm -hmm. But my guess is that if we don't have, if it's not an official meeting, then mm -mm. Okay, we do no what we votes. want. Yeah, there will be no votes, there'll be nothing, it will be um, hostessing, host, hostessing, hosting an artist. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, truly all, um, I think Dennis gets applause on this one. He has been working his heart out on this. And, um, you know, Mike is a busy artist. I mean, he truly has been doing commissions around the country. Um, and like everyone after last year and this and that and trying to organize life, it has not been easy because <laughs> he will disappear and then come back to life and disappear. And Dennis has really been doggedly working hard on this. So um, our thanks to him, because he's he's done a great job on doing the major coordination of this. And so thanks, thanks Dennis. Dennis. Um, next, we have the mountain lion mural um, that um, Stella Knowles, I, you, I don't know if you all have had a chance to see it. We did have the dedication. Um, Brianne, I don't know if, I think you're there. And I did, I emailed you a couple of photos. Um, so everyone, this was so exciting. Um, you know, there was a great turnout. Um, Shanti from Mountain Lion spoke, spoke I spoke. Um, Tom Benson said some words, he spoke. And then Stella, I did record most of her conversation. So, um, and also Shanti from Mountain Lion um, or MUDT recorded um, the whole thing too, but um, we are going to be putting some of that or, you know, some of that recording on our website as, and as soon as we can get things back there. Um, it just, it was an amazing, amazing night. I think, um, can you put the next one up? Did, did I put two, did you send you two, Brianne? There. If you get a chance, um, please go by and take a look because it truly is lovely. Um, you know, one of the things Stella said is the imagery that she used um, was based on actually some dreams she had as a, as a child with um, little animals coming. And when you were frightened, they would come and take the negative feelings and the negative thoughts out of your mind. And um, so she had used some of those little animals and put bus wheels on them. And she was just so eloquent. It, it really was, it was a lovely evening. And 
Um, I will give them to you when we have our gathering for Mike, but um, the Shanti from Missoula Urban Transportation District, they did little decals of the animals. And so I grabbed some for each of you. <laughs> and had I been thinking, would have put them in the mail. Um, but it, it's it's just very cool. They went all out for her. So it was a, it was a nice evening. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks to everybody who was able to attend because it was great. Does anybody um, anybody have any comments on that? Um, is it, it was a great, I, you know, another, I keep talking about collaboration, but this was one of those projects that was truly another exciting collaboration with one of the public sector departments in the public art committee. So, and Shanti has given us all great kudos, kudos rather about working together with her. So it was a good thing. It was nice uh, to see some publication about that in the paper too. Yes, yes, there was, they did a nice article and the new, and we had great press, so it was a good thing. Um, I, I think it looks really nice. It's really nice to see um, a place that normally is just so bland, you know, to see it full of art and color and so inviting. So very happy that that took place. And I think we will be doing another project with them in the future for the other side of the space, um, that east entrance perhaps, or maybe even more inside. So this, um, this was our second project with Missoula Urban Transportation District. Um, we had, of course, everyone's seen Tom Rapon's sculpture that is outside and then this one. So um, it's a good relationship. Um, next, we have the Rattlesnake Neighborhood Sound Wall. Um, I, you know, that there's nothing new on that. Um, they want, they would like us to keep it on the agenda. Um, we talked about leaving it there. Um, they're trying to figure out um, more public meetings, but really nothing new um, because um, it's a big wall. So they're, you know, the neighborhood truly wants to take the lead, which I love on funding and what, who, what, when, where, how, and why. So that's exciting. Um, now we have some other news. Um, I wish it was better news. Um, <laughs> Muerta, you want to get back on the line if you can? Um, we did request, um, we reported last month, I did, um, that we put in a request um, through Arts Missoula for a part-time director. Um, did a lot of groundwork this past month asking um, leaders in the community and arts leaders in the community to support a part-time director. Um, unfortunately, we did not get a part-time director, but that does not mean that we should not try again. Um, you know, we have, it, it took us two or three years to get a, a public arts coordinator. So part of this is laying the groundwork and Morita, you can speak to this. Part of this is, you know, the community's priorities for the, from the council side. Um, but I will tell you, we, um, sent out letters to community organized leaders, I, I should say, um, and just gave them some ideas of why, um, and we all know what we've talked about, why we would like a part-time director for continuity and all of those things that everybody here has spoken so eloquently about. Um, we did get some amazing letters. Um, Arnie Fishbaugh, former um, head of Montana Arts Council, Kia, Ron Murphy, um, I mean, we, we just, we had some great support. Um, Linda uh, McCarthy from the Downtown Association. Um, it just, it wasn't our time and where to I'll let you kind of add to that if you would. Um, definitely, I would say that you have a lot of support for that um, request, um, including council members. Um, I, I worked pretty closely with Heidi West to learn more about um, from her perspective, 
um, as, as a previous um, member of the uh, of the committee, what the need was, and she explained to all of us um, why it's important to have that position. I think you guys, you planted that seed and very well planted by having some really um, great support from the community. Um, so it's not, you know, not funding it is not because we don't think it would be a benefit to the community. It's just trying to not increase property taxes and providing all the services and need additional services that we have to provide um, primarily around housing and homelessness. Um, you know, some other things have to take the, be, be put on the back burner, but um, you know, my hope, and, and I, I, I talked to Tom for a little bit yesterday um, because I, I wanted him to know that we are receiving a large amount of money via um, ARPA funds, the recovery um, allocations from the federal government that are going to be, that the funding is going to be injected in a lot of different departments to do things that qualify under that funding source. So it is very, it is possible that um, that's going to free up some other monies and then we could, could you know, see a, a a mid-year budget amendment. So um, having all this background information and all the support, I think it's really good because then we can just plug in as a, as a request again. So I would say that keep asking because um, it then, then it just becomes part of um, those things that need to be funded as opposed to a brand new request. So I... <laughs> Yeah, I think I think there's a lot of support in the community and also on city council. And, you know, and I think the other part of that and, and Sony, thanks for reminding me last month, um, but because of all of this, just timing wasn't right. But I think, um, as we all know, the NEA, there are monies out there. So we can start looking at a proposal um, where there would be a match and and possibly rather than a part-time director, get a full-time director. Um, obviously then you need to deal with ongoing funding for that, but um, I'd rather, I guess, knowing kind of some of the bridges we've come over in the past and we've never given up, I'd rather think of this as our glass is half full um, in that we've laid some good groundwork. Um, I've also been, there are, um, one never knows what's going to happen with people running for city council. So I have been going and working with individuals who are running for council to talk about this same need and the same necessity. Um, it, it's just so important. So, and I, I know we all believe that. Um, so we just, I guess in my opinion, we can't give up. <laughs> no, I, I, don't think, I don't think we should. I think, like I said, I think everyone recognizes the importance of, of um, that work and especially as we continue to grow and we add more population and be, we become a bigger dot on the national map that you know with that also comes investing in our community and just like we do with so many other um, parts of the city art public art is is an important component of that and I think everyone acknowledges that um, it's just that I think we were pressed with, uh, it's not a small budget by any means, but it's um, so, pressing, so many pressing needs that um, have been uh, exacerbated in a way by COVID, um, housing being, you know, one of the main ones. And so we, we had to make that priority. Uh, but I do believe that, you know, in the near future, we're going to have the, the funds to do it. I also think that it gives us a little bit of time to find some uh, partners and some other organizations that we could tap into and make it, like you said, a full-time position and partner with someone. I'm thinking the county maybe would like to have um, some collaboration on this. So uh -huh. I think it'd be good to continue to talk about it and see how we can um, yeah, how can, how we can fund it. Mm -hmm. And I think, oh, Sony, go ahead. No, no. 
Did you do you want to go ahead and say what what you were thinking, Kathy? Nope, I'll wait for you. I can. Okay. I mean, I guess I like thinking about it. You know, bringing up housing issues, very real, present, pressing um, issues, um, and the many other issues that our city faces. Uh, I guess I wonder. I'm just going to throw out some like ridiculous art idea here for fun because that's where we are. But um just thinking about like the function of artists in our community and how we view them. And so like when you have things like we can pick how to house people or we can fund creative pursuits, I guess my question is where's the third space in between that where um, artists are part of like, are they sitting at the table with any of these discussions being, um, you know, like their skill set is in creative thinking. Um, do we have any artists sitting in um, these council meetings? Um, and just as a thought of the function of, say, a full time director for the public art committee serving for the city could you know, theoretically be a creative council liaison where some of the function is to connect creatives and their practices with various councils and work that are being done around the city um, as a way to maybe view things from a new perspective, bring in creative ideas, bring in outside thought than the people who are, you know, maybe always at the table or more typically. As a fun I, I, you know, I think that's, that's a great idea. And I, you know, those were some of the things that we not in those exact words, Sony, but the um, importance that the committee has in the non-traditional um, input for committees. And, um, I, you know, the, the, one of the examples we used was um, currents and, and not quite like this because it doesn't tug at your heartstrings, but I will tell you when they built that building, it was a concrete mass of nothingness. Um, there was, they were over budget, could not find anything. Um, I mean, could not do anything aesthetic to the exterior of that building down at McCormick Park. But it was a partnership with the Public Art Committee in hiring an artist and being able to do the design and sandblast that design on the outside of the building. Um, and we, we talked about um, how we've had artists work with um, the needy children and, and different things. And I, and I think, um, I don't know, I mean, I'm on other boards and I know we have some artist input on those boards that deal with some housing things, but not anything that the city is doing. And I, th I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I, I agree that um, I think that this committee can be inserted in so many more functions of the city and absolutely that you know a new position but but maybe we don't have to wait until there's a position and we can just kind of brainstorm mm -hmm. on oh, how absolutely. how we make that happen i mean i can i can think of a number of um committees um where component of art could be really beneficial to everyone um public works and uh -huh. Even the less, uh, you know, <laughs> obvious places, I think, um, could be good. Um, I also think that integrating this group with uh, the neighborhood's office some more, because um, there might be a lot of uh, artists in our community that are not as um, brought into the, the city's um, way of working and, and maybe reaching out or incorporating them into um, the neighborhood's office and neighborhood councils is would be a, a good thing to do. Uh, yeah, and I think, um, you know, for even though we'd work with the neighborhood councils a lot, I think that to get some, that would be us, that would to get some of the individual artists involved, I think that'd be great. I think, uh, you know, not to ask people on the committee to do additional work, but maybe there are some members on the committee and where to, maybe there are some committees that could use even to beginning and to start this, um, some input from the public art committee and maybe just to start and get it off the ground. Maybe there are some members of the committee that might want to be a part of some of the other city committees. I mean, we, 
that was one of the things that Shanti addressed in her letter was that we were amazing. I mean, we were amazing in that collaboration. Um, and again, that, you know, as a public entity, I mean, that's what we do. And once people have worked with us, they, they go, wow, how could we have ever done anything like and why, this before and why didn't we do it again? So um, maybe that's, um, Stoney, would you, I mean, I, I know you're very busy, but, um, I, and I don't want to put extra work on you, but maybe be a, a leader in just helping us or helping me work with committee members and with more to just see if there are some avenues for us to include artists and even committee members in some of those discussions? I mean, I think to me, this is a very interesting um, potential function <clears throat> and growth of um, the art committee that, um, you know, that that doesn't cause, like doesn't maybe necessarily function that, or force us to expand in a way that's unhealthy, but kind of is more systemic and um, strengthens how, were designed to begin with or the relationship between the parts. So uh, yes, Kathy, I'd be happy to help. I got to get through, I have a fundraiser starting September 11th. So I have to get through mm -hmm. that. Oh, um, yeah. Once I get through that, I'm, I'm all yours. Cool. Well, let's, um, Brianne, can we like just put that and maybe we have to look, kind of look at our agenda to say, um, you know, these are the priority items. These are the items we're working on, but we'll not um, be majorly discussed at the meeting or something just to know and so we have we have some ongoing action on some of these but we know that um they're not they're not going to be major i don't know and and i think uh, i'm sorry is it mirta am i pronouncing your name right yeah okay um mirta maybe maybe like you said you had an idea of a, a list of some committees maybe just kind of like compiling or aggregating some of those pieces together of like um you know groups that are already meeting and you know what what are the possibility for insertion points and maybe kind of some key topics that they're already you know yeah. focused on that would be that would be an amazing start yeah, I, I, I think that um, like I, as, as you know, we were talking, I just kept thinking um, when we do uh, plan updates, for example, um, even though they we're not printing paper up actual documents anymore, but they exist online and, and a lot of times that there's graphics associated with it and um, it would be great to portray our different neighborhoods, um, not just with a picture that a, a staff to the city went out and took, but instead work with local artists and um, see it from a different lens, uh, if you will. And so I can think of several departments where um, maybe we need to be, be more intentionally inclusive of the arts. I think right now there's some, mm -hmm. there might be some room there. So I'm, I'm happy to together a list and, and we can bring some. Um, this is going way back again um, to when I first wrote the grant for the Cultural Council, which became Arts Missoula <laughs> um, a million years ago. But that was one of the major themes. And it, um, you know, how we go in circles. And it just seems that, you know, one of the things I think we always need to be aware of is how do we um, insert artists into the day to day life of operations. And I think um, by making that effort as a city within the city itself, we kind of, the city has gotten away from it. And so it, it would be great to bring it back. Yeah. And I, I think one of the things that we'll want to discuss around this too is, you know, expectations, outcomes, compensation, you know, those kind of pieces, like, are they, are artists, um, being supported for their supportive role or, you know, are we taking advantage of their creative abundance? So just being sensitive to, to that as well. And, um, uh, but I think that there's a lot of, a lot of potential with this. Yeah, no, I, I think so. so. And I think this is the space that we, I don't think that you need a, a lot of capital for this and think in the way that like PAC Live also, like, I think that's, you know, if, if we, I don't know how 
other members on committees are compensated, but if they are compensated for this, I mean, I know our, our role is volunteer, um, but just kind of trying to assess um, the circumstances and, um, and the expectations around it, but um, even small grants can go a long way and be validating experiences. I think all of the city committees are a volunteer, aren't they, Moeta? Yeah, yeah, they are. Okay. But that leads us into um, idea generation. And I think what we've just been talking about um, is great um, and, and for an idea and, and involving um, artists in other aspects. So I, I mean, that's a great way to lead into that. Um, I actually have something that's not really an idea generation and it might come here now or later, but it, it needs, it will need a vote and we'll need um, to have it on our next agenda. But we all know, and we have been trying to get the city, Parks and Recreation and the state to clean Lillian Nelson's artwork on the sand wall at the Van Buren Interchange. And, um, you know, Brian um, Hensel, head of streets, you know, he, he's kind of ready, willing, um, but not able because A, they don't have the equipment that we know of that could take, um, could take the paint off the wall because of the pressure in their water trucks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I've not, gotten um, in Parks and Rec is essentially the same way. So Lily and I have been talking and she actually came up the, uh, with the idea with her husband of they, when they initially started that, they had, um, they brought down a big old tank and their power sprayer, which they could adjust the spray on. And so again, I'm, I'm just throwing this out as an idea and um, it'll, cause we just talked about it again um, this afternoon she is willing to come and actually clean the piece um, for a very small fee, in my opinion. She asked for a hundred dollars. Um, I would like to give her a little more, <laughs> like two hundred dollars. But um, well, I will put it on the agenda next month because we so desperately need to get that cleaned and maintained. And um, we have not. The highway department just will not do it. Um, and at least my opinion is if Lillian gets involved, we will, we know it will happen with TLC to the extent that she is actually willing to wash it. So. Kathy, would they be just on, do we need to do anything to like cordon off the, you know, pr protect them with cones or anything? Oh yeah. Yep. Okay. And I, I mean, would, would have to do that, but I mean, and I don't want to sound flip about that, but that's kind of. I mean, I, I can get the cones. Um, the, the, I would, we, you know, in talking with Steve Felix, who's um, the operations chief, um, he'll support whatever we do with that. They're just not going to do it. <laughs> so we can, and, and again, I'm, we'll, I will call on my friends and clients who own the traffic control place on Evero Hill and just go in and take some cones and some sidewalk close signs because we have to we have to follow all those regulations again. So that, oh go ahead. I was, I was gonna ask, does that fall in any sort of um concerns about insurance with the city or anything like that? Or is just is just putting traffic cones and whatnot out there good enough if if that's being done on well, we can run it. By, well, we can run it by Nugent. Um, you know, artists for these what our smaller projects were. They carry their own. In the city um, attorney has approved that if they have, um, believe it or not, homeowners insurance um, and health insurance, that he will accept that because work comp insurance for artists is unheard of at a ghastly price. And we um, essentially were able to get all of that idea through just because of the signal boxes, because artists could not afford, afford work comp. But so they, they sign a waiver, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I was going to say that I remember the, the downtown uh, business improvement district. They have a, I thought they had a graffiti slash mural cleaner. I wonder if they would be actually use the same graffiti when they're cleaning. What they call that is it's uh, it's they use the same thing that we do to get the tagging off the signal boxes mm -hmm. um, and charge. It was like seventy five dollars an hour or I mean, a kind of oh. that's why we, that's why for that we have Jeff Stevens. Um, this is this is true the dust, the layers and layers of dust and dirt. There, there hasn't been any, any graffiti or any tagging on it. It's just uh, that, I mean, if it was so vibrant, it is like looking out your window right now and seeing these incredible blue skies and we see incredible muted skies. Um, and so again, a not for want of of trying, but just to throw this out and I will keep trying to work with Parks and Rec and I will keep trying to work because I really, I don't think Lillian should have to do it. She she actually made that offer. Um, and I mean, maintenance is our responsibility. Um, we just have not, and frankly, I would like to see that um, our street department do it. Um, but I'm also worried that the pressure of their water tanks would blow the whole artwork off the wall. As was Brian. I mean, he's, so it does need to be cleaned. I mean, I, we've, I've had neighborhood people tell me, you know, just because of the whole um, I-90 project that they're thinking of with the sound wall, we'll come and wash it. Well, we still need to have the water. You can't carry buckets of water and continue to throw it on it. So, so Kathy, what, what about, I mean, I, I'm in favor of them cleaning it and with the artist's hand, they're obviously going to be careful with, with their work. Um, mm -hmm. I'm wondering about like, what next? It seems like beca maybe because the wall's so porous, it absorbed whatever top coat was put on. I mean, it just seems like it didn't take long for it to become muted and dull. I mean, it, it was like a month after her putting that up there that it looked like, mm -hmm. wow, something's off with it. So is there a way... I mean, what happens in the future? Is this like a annual maintenance thing that we plan for? Uh, you know, how, what next? Um, I, I wish I had a definitive answer for you. I think it does need to be an annual maintenance thing. Um, just because, I mean, I, it, you know, it was a unique project. It was a project that I think, I mean, it took them almost a month to prepare the wall. So I've, I've, I think it was a project that <clears throat> if we had the chance to do it again, <laughs> there would be a whole lot more that we learned about this project that I don't think would take place in the next just for um, time, money, the, the effort of the artist. I, it was, I think it was crazy. Um, but I do think it's something that what, if we figure out the proper way to clean it, um, I, then I think it, it's going to end up being probably a yearly thing. I wish I could say no, but it, with that with that surface that it is I mean it's it's a sand mm. wall and was so porous mm. so I'd like to be proven wrong um Dennis you've seen it um I mean and you know and Sony you've seen it um I think all of you have seen it and walked by it you put your hand on it and you are looking at a it is a rough surface So James, are you chiming in? See you pop up. James, are you gonna? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, so Kathy, do you want to vote for for her to clean it now? We a motion or what? we can't at this meeting because it was not on the agenda, oh. um, and we just talked about it. But as long as we were in this idea announcement generation kind of thing, I thought I'd throw it out and just know that it's going to be on the agenda for next month. Got it. So.
Um, is, are you ready for a new idea? Yeah. Okay. Um, I've been thinking about this a little bit about something that would be useful, particularly for, I mean, even as somebody who's served on this committee now for a few years, I actually still feel in the kind of like cloudy about this. I thought it would be neat, especially Kathy, having your expertise and like historical knowledge, um, like maybe at some time drafting kind of like a, I, I think there's a specific name for this chart. I forget. Um, feel free to jump in if you know it, but like a decision flow chart for people who come in and want to do mural projects. So we have person X come in and say, I want a mural. Then it goes to the next branch. Do they own the building? Do they have funding? Do they such and such? And then you just kind of work your way down the flow chart so you can find the path that needs to be taken to help steward the project to completion. Um, I feel like, you know, it, with the many moving parts of multi-party collaboration, especially for new people coming in, but even for people who maybe haven't gone through a full process, it can become daunting or confusing about decision-making along the way. And that that could be a very easy graphic to draft and to share with other committee members. So that's an idea. No, and that's great because, you know, we have, and it's funny, we, um, and Brianne, you're going to be up here pretty soon. Um, <laughs> um, we were looking for the mysterious white three ring binder that who knows where it is, but we, I, you know, I have thing, um, thank God I don't throw anything away. Um, just the policies and procedures on how things kind of happen. So to put that into an actual flow chart would not be difficult. Yeah. But this, you know, just all, all of that. Um, and, you know, um, I'm trying to remember, you know, for people who have not chaired a committee, it is, it's like, what is my first step? How do I do this? What is, what is that? And, um, you know, little boxes are easier to see than lots of words. So that's a great idea. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Oh. Um, the third Myrtle project is done. So um, I think as far as ideas, um, and James, I'm going to ask if you don't mind doing this since you, you tend to be our pro from Dover on all of it. Um, are there some other visually exciting um, projects that we could do in the traffic control world that you know, and I don't mean to put you on the spot now, but maybe there's some things out there you could bring to a future meeting. There, um, because we're running out of traffic signal boxes. <laughs> there, uh, there are there are locations certainly, and projects uh, years away. Uh, some associated with the development of the neighborhood greenway networks which will be focused on moving pedestrians rather than cars through the city. So those could be great uh, placemaking opportunities um, where it's favorable. Uh, the third Myrtle project, Kelly really, when the installation was complete, Kelly, owner of Metasuite, uh, release, submitted a press release and um, they, I believe the adjoining businesses and members of the community are seeking further installation of perhaps a three-dimensional uh, piece of artwork for that location. And so I think there is, I think there is some um, curiosity for getting the public art committee involved and cool. taking, taking some steps Board and I'll be looking for capital funding um, since uh, grant getting awarded grant funding uh, could be a longer process possibly mm -hmm. than just trying to raise capital funding for this particular project. So um, that that would be something that they are looking to pursue for that site. And uh, Kelly had expressed to me when we were installing some uh, some equipment out there that a uh, placemaking attraction such as creating something that people would want to be photographed in front of uh, mm -hmm. to, to draw interest to 
their little intersection there would be of of importance they they're looking they're looking for additional place making opportunities and uh, mm -hmm. further insulations to fill out the space cool that be yeah um, Stony, I'm not um, pack live, not to bug you with that, but <laughs> um, Showtime Dance Company is interested in being um, participating in that. If um, cool. if and if and when, um, yeah, they they do, a variety, they do a variety of things. But I was um, talking to them about it, and I just said I would mention that to you. Um, and I'm sure there's other others out there as well. And yeah. Thanks for bringing that up, Kathy. And I think we finally have rounded a corner and probably should begin planning for next year. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think that we've gotten a hand, not, not obviously not a handle on COVID. Things are going sideways. However, we have a, a new evolution of vaccinations, boosters. We'll make it all the way through winter and surely we'll be able to at least convene during the warm months of next year. Um, and we'll have some semblance of uh, first Fridays. So I think anticipating that, planning for it. Um, uh, I, I apologize for being late. I, I recognize that I missed whatever discussion happened about budget. Um, uh, I didn't see any like a spreadsheet or anything with access to our, our budget. So we would want to kind of talk about what our budget would be for PAC Live, and maybe we can maybe we can discuss that next session. And I can maybe frame together a bit of a calendar arc of our, you know, call and um, reviewing selections and selections and, and uh, the, the calendar for next year. I'd be happy to do that um, for in time for next meeting. Cool. Um, well, I did, I won't, well, we have $22,769 and 45 cents. Um, 22, okay. Um, we don't know how that's divided up yet. We were able to meet with finance by next meeting. We will know which is which part of that is maintenance, which is administration, and which is for project. Okay, cool. So, Great. Um, yeah, there's Penunce. And um, Tiana, Tiana, I don't know if you all know, but she is in the symphony. And so, oh, great. Uh, so maybe. Um, yeah, maybe we can talk with Tiana. some performers in that sense as well. I think that would be really great. Sorry, you guys, I'm in the car. I'm on my way to teach. So <laughs> I'm driving. Perfect. Well, my dear, I just volunteered you to help Stoney. <laughs> oh, I'm Tiana. in. Great. I'll, I'll reach out. Maybe we can have a, a meeting. And if there's anybody else who's into kind of more performative ephemeral works that include music, dance, projections, you name it, um, a holler and, and I'll loop you in. Um, it's a it's a great program, and it was um, you know it's long been in our public art ordinance that we can do performance arts, and we, you know, Stony grabbed the bull by the horns, and it, it when the year we did it, it was phenomenally successful. People loved it, and then COVID hit. So, dang that COVID! So, hey, Miss Fran, are you there? Before yes, we hello. So can you can you put a photo up so people could see you? <laughs> um, can I? Does this? Yeah, here's the camera. Guys, we have we have been so lucky. Um, oh, I, hi. I've, I'm going to toot her horn. <laughs> has been amazing. Um, stepping in, as I said, with both feet and um, trying to get us organized and, um, or reorganized. Um, so she's been doing a great job. Um, and maybe while you're talking with your mask on, you can give us an update on our website because <clears throat> that was a disappointment. Not so, um, but anyway, tell the tell show your lovely face without with your mask to the committee. Um, hopefully, you could come to our gathering with Mike so people could see you in person. But you guys, Brianne is great. So, tell us about yourself. Yes, hello, um, I'm Brianne. I definitely knew that I was gonna have to introduce myself and definitely did not prepare to say anything. <laughs> um, so I apologize. I've been in the position for about three weeks now. I'm really enjoying it. I'm new to Missoula. I'm really excited to work with you all and learn more about the work that you're already doing. Um, in terms of the website, I sent you all an email 
last week, the week before maybe, about the fact that our domain name has lapsed and we have lost that domain name. Um, and we have asked the Missoulian because they owned a different domain name that was like kind of similar, but they don't, they don't know like who has access to it because of staff turnover. So from our emails, it seemed sort of like the consensus was to go with, um, I think it was missoulapublicart.com. Uh -huh. um, and so I think that's probably our best option right now. But right now there isn't really a public facing website. So when people Google Missoula Public Art Committee, um, obviously the city pops up, the city's website pops up, but not ours. So that resource is not available right now. I don't know. Can you think of anything else, Kathy? Um, well, I was just going to give people uh, um, just kind of an idea of we're, we're going to maybe step back to what our previous coordinators have done. Brianna is going to really emphasize our Facebook, our Instagram, our social media presence that had been um, not happening on a regular basis. Um, so she's back at that um, and is going to spotlight different things. And some things might be historical, some might be contemporary. Um, and, uh, you know, as far as the website, the MissoulaPublicArt.com, the city, or I mean, the Missoulian owns that. And they did, they purchased that so that um, the arts revolution, the public art guide would have a place to land. Um, they, Jackie Wallowander is talking to the publisher and everybody there about us having that, um, they just, they still, uh, and which is amazing, they still wanna do the public art guide again. So that's what they're going back and forth on. Um, and then there was other ones, uh, you know, the publicartmissoula.org and publicartmissoula.com, you know, they're not as great, but you know, um, there is something to be saying if you're gonna look for public art, sometimes public art is the first word out of your mouth in the communities later but maybe not. So we're gonna still work on that um, and, try and try and see if we can get uh, MissoulaPublicArt.com from the Missoulian. Um, unfortunately, um, the other, um, when we got the notification about that being um, due, We didn't see it. So um, anyway, but onward and upward. So we obviously we do have the city, the city website. We, you know, we all know that it's just lacking. And oh, and the other thing Brianne's gonna be doing is kind of giving our website some more punch as long as we have to um, redo it is updating it and making it a little more contemporary. Um, well, but she's, oh, go ahead, Stoney. Oh, just uh, one, welcome, Brianne. Um, yeah, thank you for your service. And uh, two, a little, little too little, little too late. I prefer a .org myself, um, uh -huh. but whatever. I, I can roll with whatever you pick. Well, that, you know, uh, that's why, you know, again, I, it's not my favorite name, um, but publicartmissoula.org. Somebody can think of some something else. Shoot it out there, and we can. And because, um, and shoot it to me and Brianne, or shoot it to the committee, and you know. There, there is an ease of the phrase Missoula Public Art versus Public oh, yeah. Art Missoula. Although, as a search, like searching, I may search more for Public Art actually first versus Missoula because Missoula is such a broad thing, public is public art is more specific. So, um, I mean, I think, I think the reality, as long as your SEO is up to par, it doesn't matter because people are just gonna look in the search bar and whatever, you uh -huh. know, whatever the website is, is what it is. Um, well, when we name your, okay, so I'm dating myself. When we named Sign Pros, we knew people were going to look in the yellow pages under signs, <laughs> not pro. So we didn't call them pro signs around the country. Um, we call them Sign Pros. So that was the only reason we thought of public art Missoula. So, it, you know, just, um, but we'll work on it. Hopefully we'll have something um, going by next month. 
What about just MSO instead of Missoula, publicartmso.org? Well, we thought of that because for people who fly, that, you know, that's the airport. Um, yeah, I'm always, a, I'm always a fan of shorter things to type, uh -huh. web addresses. But, um, oh, there it is. I see it. Someone actually thought MSO public art. Sorry, this is the first time I'm seeing these e emails because... That, that would be everything... because I used to travel 45 weeks out of the year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I still have to keep training my Outlook email to recognize members from our board as being friendly. It always puts them in a different folder. Like all of our <laughs> links are always in a different folder than my inbox. So. That would happen. Right. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, there's a lot of unread emails in my folder. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And also, welcome, Brianne. Brand has some great experience, y'all. I mean, she's she's pretty amazing. And I and if you can make it to our Mike Lustig event, Brianne, it would be great. And that way, people can see you in person and see how wonderful you are. And um, really, it, it, every she's doing a great job for its Missoula, and she's thus far doing a great job for us. The first three weeks, she did pretty darn well. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. That's very kind. Um, if we have missed anything on the agenda, um, please let me know. Um, and so it can be on the next agenda. Um, I have, Kathy, I have one more question. This is, this is fairly short, but I just get a sense. I, I have, we're full on committee members right now. Do we need anybody? I have a lead on somebody who may be a good addition, but I don't know. Can we, can you give Brienne that name? Because I was also, um, someone else mentioned a name to me as well, um, because we are full, but you know what? You just never know. Well, I, I'm going to, I'm going to feel them out first because okay. it's, uh, I want to, I want to be sensitive to his identity. Okay. Depending upon consent. Oh but yeah. If he's cool with it, I'll, I'll pass on the name. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because um, the, the mayor has been, um, appointing people and uh, because he can, I mean, this is not, I'm not trying to make this sound positive or negative because he can, because when he sees a shining star, Tiana, he, um, you know, he can make that appointment. So if we hand him a list of shining stars, he could make that appointment. So great, that, thank you. Um, thanks all. I, with that being said, I think it is 523. Um, uh, if we have nothing more, I'll adjourn the meeting. And once again, I really appreciate everybody's input. Um, and, you know, if you don't say anything, I'll just call on you. It's like being in school. <laughs> um, so anyway, we'll adjourn the meeting, but I really appreciate everybody's involvement and everybody's help. So thanks. Thanks, thanks everyone. See ya. We're adjourned. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Brianne. Thanks, city clerk staff, Megan. Thank you. Thank you.